Hello friends of Visual Politic. My name is Josh. It's a pleasure to meet you. This is my first time here on the channel, but luckily you'll be seeing me here every week. Mankind's landing on the moon, the Great Wall of China, Notre Dame Cathedral, all these human achievements are nothing compared to the virus of the COVID-19 vaccine. Humanity has never faced such a challenge. And I know what some of you are thinking, come on Josh, aren't you exaggerating just a little? Vaccines for other nasty diseases already existed before the SARS coronavirus 2 pandemic. What's more, the first vaccine in history was invented way back in 1798. Well, yes, you're right. Vaccines are nothing new. What is new is time trial work. For example, it took 15 years to develop the human papilloma vaccine, a total of 20 years for the polio vaccine, and there's still no vaccine for SARS or AIDS. But wait a minute, because we're not just talking about scientific research, suppose someone came up with the perfect vaccine for COVID-19. Fantastic! Now we just need to get 7 billion copies for all the inhabitants of planet Earth and carry out the biggest vaccination campaign in history. If you simply think that's a question of money, you're so wrong. We're talking about science, logistics, and above all, a thing called value chain. This is a process that has been going on for decades. However, I'm sure you've heard news like this. Bill Gates. Predictions show it could take anywhere from nine months to two years to create a vaccine. This is what Bill Gates said. Let's see who would dare to contradict Bill Gates. This explains why so many media outlets talk about an alleged vaccine coming in 12 or 18 months. And that's not all. Suddenly, every country in the world boasts a COVID-19 vaccine candidate. That includes the United States, China, United Kingdom, but also such countries as the Czech Republic or Spain. But the race for the vaccine has far more important consequences. Canada will not return to normality until a coronavirus vaccine is developed. That could be a long way off. Italian Vice President Pier Paolo Sileri. Normality will only arrive when we have the vaccine. I think you get the idea. Many governments expect the vaccine to arrive within a reasonable time frame. Nine months, 12 months, two years. During that time, borders could remain closed and we will probably have to restrict all our freedom, but only for a few months. The question is, is it realistic to think that we're going to have a vaccine in two years? Why is it so difficult to develop a vaccine? And why is it so difficult to mass produce it? Today, we're going to answer these questions, but first, First, let's look at some history. How to fool your body. Before we talk about politics, we need to understand some notions of biology. For that, I have to thank Laura Willen from the Parasitology Department in the Charles University of Prague. She has resolved a lot of doubts, and thanks to her, I can now tell you what happens when we get infected with coronavirus. Let's imagine that I get infected. In other words, suddenly the coronavirus enters my body. Well, what would happen in this case? Well, the first cells to be infected realize that a freak has just entered, a bug that shouldn't be there. What's the first thing they do? Inform the rest of the cells. That is, they send a signal to the other cells and start producing antibodies. Antibodies are like soldiers who fight viruses or bacteria. We call this process the immune response. But, as you can imagine, my body needs to create special antibodies to fight the coronavirus. And since they've never faced this type of virus, they don't know what kind of antibodies they have to create. In other words, my body is going to spend literally days testing different types of antibodies until I find the right one. Once found, my body has to generate enough of these antibodies to destroy the virus. The problem? Well, in the meantime, the coronavirus has already infected millions of cells, and it's generated millions of copies. That is, the virus army is more numerous than that of the antibodies. Conclusion, a lot of people lose the war. Now think, what if we could generate all the antibodies without having the coronavirus? Well, that's what makes a vaccine. The job of the vaccine is to deceive our organism. That is, we make it believe it's having a coronavirus attack. We generate the antibodies, but we don't have that army of bugs that can kill us. This is called immunological memory. So our body learns how to deal with the virus. And the day a real invasion arrives, your body knows what kind of antibodies it has to create. This is the basic principle of a vaccine, and this is why, thanks to vaccines, diseases such as polio and smallpox are close to being eradicated. So once again, the day that we all have the COVID-19 vaccine is the day that we can say we're done with the pandemic.
And you'll say, but how is it that the body can be deceived? Well, there are mainly five strategies. The first is to use the coronavirus itself to make it inactive. Another is to weaken it. Of all vaccine candidates, these are the least commonly used candidates. Other companies are opting for another strategy, what they call subunit vaccines, that simply use bits of the virus. Other labs, however, are working on what they call viral vector vaccines. These vaccines take a copy of the coronavirus that isn't exactly coronavirus, but generates the same immune response. Finally, there is another much more modern type that are nucleic acid vaccines. And I know what you're going to say. Okay, so why is it so hard to find a vaccine? I mean, the science is already known. The technology is known. Just take the coronavirus samples, put them in a syringe and you're done. We already have a vaccine. Well, I'm afraid it's much more complicated. Let's take a look right now. Why does it take so long to find a vaccine? A vaccine has two risks, too much or too little. Think about it. The vaccine is one of the few medications we take when we're healthy. That is, a poorly made vaccine can have too much of a viral load and end up infecting people who are healthy. That happened, for example, with the first tests that were done with the polio vaccine. In fact, these kinds of isolated cases are what fuel the conspiracy theories of anti-vaxxers. The other risk is to fall short. That is, that the vaccine does not generate the immune response that we're looking for. For example, this has happened with some AIDS vaccine attempts. That's why the process of finding a vaccine is so tremendously long and expensive. Research and clinical testing alone can cost more than 200 million euros. And then you have to make the vaccine en masse, and you're going to see that it's not as simple as making cars. So how is a vaccine made? Well, the first step is pure and rigorous research. We must find the antigen, which is that principal component that deceives our body and triggers the specific immune response against the virus. Normally, this antigen is combined with another substance called adjuvant, which is like a kind of catalyst. That is, it is a general activator for the immune system. We're talking about an investigation that lasts several years. Basically, you need to produce the virus to have samples, then isolate it and test all possible options. This entire process can take up to two, three or four years. And what's the next step? Trials. As you can imagine, before trying it on people, it is tested on animals. That explains new stories like this. Six monkeys given experimental coronavirus vaccine from Oxford did not catch COVID-19 after heavy exposure, raising hopes for a human vaccine. These animal tests are called preclinical trials. They also last several years because, as you can imagine, it takes a long time to see if there are any side effects over time. At this stage, many alternatives are eliminated. Up until this point, public universities, research centers, and private companies are competing for solutions. But once a vaccine candidate that works in animals has been found, that's when we move on to clinical trials trials, that is, testing on humans. Coronavirus. First patients injected in UK vaccine trial. Human testing is the most complicated part of the process. In fact, tests are usually done in several phases. Typically, in cases such as these, they are outsourced to specialized companies. These companies are called CROs. Remember that these tests need all of the security checks you can imagine. In some cases, groups of up to a thousand patients are required. Some are given the vaccine and others are given a placebo. The effects of each group are then studied and the results are presented to governments. For example, in the United States, the regulatory body is the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA. By the time the vaccine is presented, two years of laboratory tests have already been conducted, another two of animal tests, and between five and ten years of clinical trials. Finally, with a little luck, the governments approve the vaccine. We move on to the next step, mass production. And I know what many of you will be thinking, production can't be that hard. Once we have a master formula, we go to the chemical plant, we mix all of the products, and we produce vaccines on a factory line like cars, right? Well, it's nothing like that, I'm afraid. Actually, rather than a vaccine, vaccine factory, we should talk about vaccine farms. Because it's not about mixing products, it's about developing a virus so you can put it in syringes. For example, many of these vaccine farms use things like hen eggs or tobacco leaves to grow the virus. In fact, each vaccine needs its own farm. In other words, the COVID-19 vaccine will not be able to be produced in the same place as the flu or any other vaccine is made. We need to build a new lab exclusively for this vaccine. And that takes several months or even several years. Think that you have to build a building, buy all the machines to raise the viruses, and above all, hire the staff. That takes time. From there, scientists re-isolate the virus, manipulate it, and create the liquid that we're going to be putting in the syringes. And yes, we did say scientists. At no point in this process can we just put anyone on duty and give them a lab coat. All workers in this process have to be qualified professionals.
But not only that, we're talking about developing viruses. That is, it is not a matter of creating a more or less efficient factory. In order to have vaccines, we have no choice but to wait for the viruses to develop and reproduce. And this is a process that can take days or months. In other words, imagine repeating this process 7 billion times to get 7 billion vaccines. But wait, because we're not done. Every time a shipment of vaccines is produced, we need a new quality control. In reality, every part of the manufacturing process has quality controls. Therefore, governments in each country have to send an inspector to check that the vaccines coming out of that farm are in perfect condition. Conclusion. Every time that you have a vaccination, you can breathe easy. Few things in this world go through so many checks. So it's a long and tedious process. But now government Governments around the world are saying that they can have it in less than two years. Is this even possible? How are they going to make that happen? Well, we'll have a look at that right now. A vaccine in 18 months? In this pandemic, we have a unique superpower for the first time in our history, globalization. <laughs> That's right. Look at it this way. The basis of finding a vaccine for COVID-19 is trial and error. The more people who have tested different vaccines, the faster we'll find one. Luckily, we've never had as much talent in the world as we do right now. There are more than 100 vaccine projects, and many come from countries like China or Singapore. Countries that 30 years ago had no large universities or pharmaceutical laboratories, and that can now compete in this race. Remember I was telling you there are several strategies of finding a vaccine? Well, every company and every university is opting for a different strategy. As you can see in this graph, there are protein-based vaccine projects, others are based on viral vectors, etc. The more companies we have, the faster we'll find different winning formulas. Well, I say different formulas because we probably won't have one, but several different COVID-19 vaccines. And you'll say, but where does all that money come from? Who finances all of this? Some of that funding comes from investors and private companies, but also from different nations. Look at this. Coronavirus global response, 7.4 billion euros raised for universal access to vaccines. On the other hand, many large pharmaceutical companies have created joint projects, what they call joint ventures, in order to create vaccines. Here's an example. Sanofi and GSK to join forces in unprecedented vaccine collaboration to fight COVID-19. Basically, the whole world seems to have agreed on the needs to find several vaccines. And yes, that also includes the officials who regulate the pharmaceutical industry. For example, news like this is unique in history. Pfizer begins human trials of possible coronavirus vaccine. Think about it carefully. So far, we've said that it takes years before a vaccine starts being tested on humans. However, in this case, we are talking about a few months. That is, COVID-19 was not known until the end of 2019. Right now, it's May 2020, and there are already several labs that are doing clinical testing. And I know what many of you may be thinking, but how is this possible? I mean, how is it possible for governments to speed up such a controlled process so much? One of two things must be happening. Either the regulations were useless or perhaps regulators are turning a blind eye. For this, there is one group who can reassure all of us, lawyers. Should a vaccine generate too severe side effects, armies of lawyers are ready to report to manufacturers. In this case, medical malpractice would come at a price, and it's a price that could bankrupt a lot of pharmaceutical companies. In other words, they all have enough incentive to get things right. But not only that, speed of production is also important. One of the slowest tasks is the mass production of a vaccine, right? Well, in this respect, Bill Gates has a lot to say. <laughs> Gates Foundation commits $50 million to COVID-19 vaccine initiative. Total funding now tops $300 million. So what's all this money for exactly? Well, no, it's not for research, it's for production. In other words, these vaccine farms are already being built. And you'll say, how is it possible if there is no approved vaccine yet? Well, they're preparing the production lines for some of the candidates. This way, if they get the approval of some administration, they can start mass producing the next day. And yes, you heard correctly, a huge chunk of this money is going to end up in failed projects. I mean, we're talking about billions of dollars that could be lost. All of this for a single purpose, to extend the chances of having a vaccine quickly. 
And the question is, is this enough? Is all this money and all these scientists working to guarantee that we'll have a vaccine in two years? Well, the answer is no. We're talking about a probability game. Is it possible to have a vaccine in two years? Anything is possible. Is it likely? Well, on that point, we can have a lively debate. Is it safe? Absolutely not. So, are we finished? The truth is that even if we do not find a vaccine, it is possible that medicines will be discovered in order to cure COVID-19 once we have become infected. But that's the subject of another video, because we still have a lot to talk about when it comes to the pharmaceutical industry and coronavirus. For example, which country would be the first to receive the vaccine? That's what we're going to talk about soon. So if you don't want to miss any upcoming videos, subscribe to Visual Politic and make sure that you don't miss any of our updates. So now the question is over to you. Do you think that it makes sense for governments to keep restrictions in place until the vaccine appears? Or maybe we'll have to learn how to live with the virus. You can leave me your answer in the comments. Once again, I would like to thank Laura Willen. I also have to thank Ignacio Lopez Goni, who is professor of microbiology at the University of Navarra. Ignacio has been reviewing this script to make sure that all of the scientific information we have given you is correct. I must also thank the people at Pfizer, Sanofi, GSK, and the University of Oxford, who have advised me during the preparation of this video. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. Don't forget to check out our friends at the Reconsider Media podcast. They provided the vocals in this episode that were not mine. Also, this channel is possible because of Patreon and our patrons on that platform. Please consider joining them and supporting our mission of providing independent political coverage. Again, I've been Josh. Thanks for watching my first video here at Visual Politic and I'll see you next time. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.